In the second video lesson dedicated to William Shakespeare, I will discuss um, specifically the tragedies and the comedies of his uh, drama. As far as the tragedies are concerned, the substance of the matter tackles, quite, um, tackles uh, is quite different. So, setting aside the history, he chooses to investigate instead human nature. It's, um, especially, it is especially its frailty that uh, he pays extra attention to, and uh, despite the fact that uh, his characters are mostly high-ranking people, like queens, or kings, or, or princes, and the such, what he d digs deep into is their most intimate personality, and, um, in fact, his characters are far from being uh, perfect heroes or heroines. On the contrary, Shakespeare shows them as being full representatives of the humankind, at times overwhelmed by their public role, and thus incapable of taking a firm stand on important political issues, at others deeply troubled by personal weaknesses, that blind them to the point of losing any uh, ability to rational thinking and therefore taking action driven only by emotion and instinct rather than reason, thus causing their own uh, tragic downfall. Moreover, what's also relevant to note is the Shakespeare characters are round characters, meaning that, as it happens in real life, they are both vulnerable and strong, endowed with flaws as well as good qualities. In other, moreover, they uh, develop during the uh, the play. Um, so, for instance, if a flat character stays the same from the beginning to the end um, of a uh, of a play, in the case of Shakespeare, we can uh, observe that the character has a, a development in its, um, in, in, in its deep, um, in its deep nature. There are changes that take place during the action. Um, so, even mm, the virtuous and uh, good at heart characters um, may uh, become uh, prisoners of their own inner disputes and inconsistencies and for that are doomed at times even to the point of death. Um, the third group of uh, plays uh, um, are represented by the comedies which can be character uh, categorized as dark comedies on one hand and as romances on the other. What they share in common is undoubtedly the happy endings um, through which the, um, uh, the writer restores order and good feelings among the character at the end of the work. However, they are also notably different as far as content and themes are concerned. Um, in the former group, the dark comedies, we find plays in which the author strives to unveil man's deep contradictions, dubious dispositions, or even their dark sides, simplifying all those multiple characteristics that, um, that make up its real nature and often cause pain and misery to the individual. Romances, on the contrary, and especially the earlier ones, are more light-hearted and true to the fashion of the time, showing um, that Shakespeare was well familiar with the nobility's lifestyle and the practices of the court. In the later ones, though, he turned to much more sophisticated psychological character inner analysis with uh, exceptional insightfulness. In conclusion, then, what is that ensures William Shakespeare's uh, immortality and universal appreciation of his extensively rich production? Well, first and foremost, as we have already said several times, is mastery of the English language, which, as said, 
he enhance and contribute to uh, standardize. Secondly, his gifted observation of the human soul, his, eclect um, his eclectic ability to investigate in depth man's concerns, which can be uh, passions, feelings, and emotions, such as uh, friendship, greed, pride, jealousy, honor, thirst for power, which provide a clear insight and insightful view of not only the society of his time, um, but also giving a knowledgeable picture of English history and also, uh, importantly, he additionally die, um, gives his audiences of all times a universal outlook on human nature, allowing thus his art to reach to us today as it did in the past. In the third place, Shakespeare is also innovative in staging strong and willful female characters. Whether virtuous or wicked, young or mature, they all are active and assertive uh, characters. Determined in their pursuits to the point of death, they are not submissive at all, and in this it, um, Shakespeare's uh, plays are uh, extremely modern. Another um, element of um, uh, of the um, innovative art of Shakespeare, which um, uh, makes him also uh, modern, is the uh, fact that he has a full command of rhetoric. His soliloquies and monologues are um, central uh, in all his plays and they all have incredible impact in the action. Um, uh, they reveal the, mm, the deep uh, inner turmoil of um, Shakespeare's protagonist and shake them um, deeply. It is through his expert use of words that uh, his hero, heroes are entrapped in their own weaknesses and eventually uh, collapse. His, um, it is to the doubtful and at times insecure uh, nature of some of his uh, uh, protagonists, the climax and tragedy, but at the same time what makes them truly modern because they embody the typical frailty of modern men who is never sure of, uh, of anything, never sure of himself and who is always um, torn between his uh, deep ponderings and uh, deep questioning not only of himself but of the world around him thus um, uh, outlining a different type of individual as compared to the individual um, that was usually uh, staged in uh, Shakespeare's time uh, till then or till then which was uh, um, an individual who had uh, um, definite uh, uh, points of reference um, and uh, uh, certainty that came uh, to them through uh, the um, right and wrong clear division that was very common at the time. So um, the fact that Shakespeare chooses his protagonists and um, his pro um, these protagonists are um, quite uh, um, true to uh, the real nature of the individual, thus uh, surfacing uh, doubts and insecurities that make them um, easier for the, uh, for the audience to uh, um, see eye to eye with them.